Hey guys, that up here. I got a comment with a lot of questions from a new gardener, Lisa Beville, I believe, who mentioned that she could have left a voicemail on my new question phone number, but she had a lot of them. So we're going to go through some of her questions right now and answer them because they're about my garden. It says, uh, I notice that you grow a lot of things in pots. Do you find that wood pots are better to grow in than plastic? I don't know. Um, we don't really ever grow in pots. This is just some that we had sitting on the porch. They were getting in the way, so we put them out. Uh, because, and this is why we grow in the pots, this is mint. And mint is going to spread, and we wanted to contain it. This is comfrey. By the way, guys, look at my comfrey. Ah, oh, awesome. Okay, anyway, this is comfrey, and it spreads and takes over. And then we just had an extra one here. So we put tomatoes in it, which are doing a lot better now. And then, well, and then we have uh, plastic here and there and there. And they all have sand at the bottom, then like manure, then compost. And I don't know, we're just growing them in there because we had some pots and we had some leftover compost and whatnot and uh, that's where we put it so uh, are there any rocks in your tubs no we just have the sand and the manure and then the compost uh, let's see how long have you been having your back to eden garden going for and here we have been on this property here for almost three years now yeah almost three years in october and when we got it it was all sand even the grass here this is pretty much all sand and it took us a while to get the grass back and out there in the pasture we have uh, been putting the wood chips down trying to recreate soil again but everything out here is pure sand underneath the wood chips then it says, uh, let's see here. Uh, notice that you have to sprinkle or use a sprinkler. How much are you giving the water? How much are you having to water your garden? Uh, I don't know what, how much we have to, but with everything being sand, I run each line on the sprinklers for an hour at night. I know it's way too much, but underneath it, it's just sand, so it's all just draining right through anyway. So, that's that. Out here, these uh, sprinklers with the hoses, that one, and that one right there. And the one that you might be able to hear in the background that's on the backyard right now, uh, those run for probably about an hour each in the mornings. Uh, it's just finishing up its cycle now, and it's what, 8.30 or 7.30? So how much do I have to living out here in the desert? I don't know. But I do it for an hour because, again, it, all the extra is just going to run through and get back down into the aquifer and call it good. Next question. Do you constantly get wood chips from a tree service? I did get constantly get wood chips from a tree service and they would bring them out and put them in this area right here and then in big piles and then about once a month or so they'd come through with like a bobcat kind of a thing i think it was called a case and they would knock it all down but then they'd keep piling it in the same spot so you can see here we got a huge mound still going even after it's all been leveled and out there is a couple extra mounds and i kind of wanted them to start pushing it out that way as much as they could and so they kind of started out that way and then we had the nasty grams from the county and we had to get a grading permit right there it is we had to get a grading permit spend some money pay a fine and then we were allowed to have up to 500 cubic yards which this is give or take and then we still have to kind of grade it down that's good for about two years and 
once I uh, uh, level this down a little bit more, I'll call them out to have them look at it and say, hey, you're good. After that, they take that one away. We wait a little bit of time. Then we can apply for another one of those and do another 500 cubic yards and have, you know, 50 trucks or whatever come through here and drop them off again. See all the wood we got from? Got a whole bunch of pile of wood there still. Piles over there. And then there's some underneath all this here. But that's all free wood from tree service. Not that we have a fireplace, but maybe one day. Wood burning stove in here would be awesome. So let's see the next question. Um, why do you why do you have a small valley built around your fruit tree? Is that an important thing to do? No, it is not an important thing to do. Um, I should not have tried to plant this in. Uh, right now we're standing on top of about, let's say right here, probably about three actual feet of wood chips. Yeah. Here, it's more down to about two. You don't plant in the wood chips. You plant in the dirt or sand or whatever you got underneath the wood chips. So the reason why I have this belly is because I had to dig and dig and dig to get to the sand and uh, soil or whatever was down there to plant the roots of the tree in. Then we filled up a little bit, not much, just enough to cover the sand and us walking around like this and knocking it in accidentally and stuff is how it's filled in a little bit. But that level there is where we want all of this to end up being. And that would be level with like that tree and the one that's hidden there and that one there and this one over here kind of had to do the same thing on right here. So that's about level. Kind of goes this way because of the wind blowing the sand. So that is why um, I don't want any of this here. But I went through afterwards and started planting stuff. So now I gotta wait until after it's all gone, like my little peanuts there. All this stuff's gone before I can level all that out again. And that is why we have the ditch. It is not always gonna be a ditch. It wasn't intended to be a ditch. It just ended up that way right now. Next question. What type of apple tree do you have? These are both Costco apple trees. And look at this zucchini. It's getting so big. I already pulled a couple off of here already. There's some more in here that are getting ready to be picked soon. Anyway, here we have on the side of it. A combination. Apple. Several varieties. Item numbers and everything. On here we have Norland. Uh, Harlison. Oh, there you go. Harlison. My shadow is shadowing. This is Wine Sap. This one here is Loda. Lodi. And we already got that one. And then the other one. Hello, little asparagus. Hey, sunflowers. Huge. Uh, the other apple tree. Let's cut through here. Okay, so that one we planted this year from Costco. This one over here we planted last year. And it performed pretty much like that one did. But this one here is another combination apple. And this has early Fuji. And it has red Gravenstein. And it has honey crisp. And it has Liberty. We did take a couple apples off of this to kind of raise it up just a little bit. I don't want that one to break. Yeah, 
it's still doing good. You might have to take a couple more off. I did try them and they were tart, but I still grew them and I still eat them. Well, part of them. Okay, let's see here. Next question is, Uh, how do you keep the bunnies out of your strawberries? Um, answer is, I don't. Uh, I don't really care. We're going to grow enough for all of them. It's probably why I don't really have any strawberries on these ones yet. Look at how much that's running. I'm going to try to get it all going that way into that big pile. But, uh, yeah, the bunnies, they eat the strawberries, they eat the lettuce. See, these ones are running that way too. Eat this whole area here covered in strawberries, and that side can be for raspberries. And I don't know, blueberry. But the bunnies eat strawberries, the bunnies eat the lettuce, the quail come out here and eat stuff. There's a whole bunch of quail living inside of all of that there. Quail and their little babies are so cute. So I don't keep them from doing it. Just grow enough. You don't have to. And here's the reason why. I'm a prepper. Survivalist type. Prepare for what would happen if moments. And uh, right now, my garden grows bunnies and quail. So if I ever had to, I can eat bunnies and quail. Uh, then they'd probably stop eating out of my garden, wouldn't they? Uh, let's see here. Sorry for all the questions. No worries. I love answering your guys' questions. You are brave for taking phone calls from folks. Yeah, yeah. Not really. Actually, I like the questions on the phone that I've been getting lately. They're kind of awesome. You sent me another question. Oh, and I just deleted it. Undo. You sent me another question. Uh, do you have any idea where Paul originally bought his apple trees? Well, just a quick reminder. Um, Burnt Ridge Nursery. Burnt Ridge Nursery and, and, and Orchard. It's in Onalaska, Washington. Onalaska is the city it's in. Where do you buy seeds? I buy seeds from three different places. Seed Savers Exchange, Baker Creek Heirloom Seed, and Fedco. Leave questions on the voicemail. Leave questions in the comments. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Smack around that bell icon and uh, you'll get notified when we make new videos. Comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.